okay, so so I I grew up not feeling like like the way I grew up, I wasn't told like first of all, I'm originally from the Bronx, right? So I'm originally from uh the South Bronx Patterson Projects, and you know. My mother, my uncle was a hustler, so he saved, he literally saved the entire family and took us all from New York to Atlanta. So my uncle did that. Now, mind you, my uncle could have just decided to take his kids. Mm -hmm. He could have just decided to take his kids and his mother. But the way my family was set up from the beginning, no, no child was left behind. So we literally like 18 of us moved to Atlanta to live in one house. And, you know, so I come from a place where it was like, I always knew when I was spared. I always knew like, damn, what if he didn't take me out of New York? Or, you know, like I always think my, my story is I was at the mercy of someone else who decided I'm gonna give this to you. So I never took that for granted. So, you know, fast forward when I just, I wasn't like, I wasn't like the one in my family that was supposed to be somebody like, and I come from New York's, New Yorkers who will tell you, you ain't shit. It, like I like my family is like paid in full. Like nigga, you ain't got no fucking money. What you doing? Like <laughs> I come from that environment. So, so when so you know I really wasn't the favorite. I was like the cousin that they would say I wasn't good in school. So I was like the cousin that they would say you know stay the fuck away from him. You going to college? He's a loser. So I I wore that shit. So it wasn't like I. And then one day I woke up like. Damn, like, it's so funny because it was this girl, because I was like, I always was in the chicks. I was messing with this girl because one of my cousins went to Morris Brown. And I was just hanging out at Morris Brown with him, you know what I'm saying? Like, getting on the chicks. And this one chick just went in on me like, you a loser. You don't go to school here. You hanging out on college campuses trying to get girls. Nigga, you a hoop dream, nigga. You ain't going to be nothing. And that shit, and it was like, like, because I come from a family of honesty, I didn't look at her like, oh, you know what you're talking about. I like, she's right. So... I started seeking something that was just like, I remember pushing wheelchairs in the airport around this time I was hanging out with my cousin. I'm pushing wheelchairs in the airport in the day and going to hang out college campus at night. Mind you, everybody else on campus is like students, bright future. And I'm the one that's like, I'm just hanging around these smart kids and I ain't nothing. So when I started, uh, when I started realizing that it was just kind of like recognizing like, shit, I ain't nobody. Like I'm nobody, damn, I'm nobody. And it was a very honest moment. And I just started seeking shit. I started speaking positivity. I started, I started searching for it. And then I'm like 22 years old. And then somebody that I went to school with flags me down, like on my own. Oh, no, no, before we get into this part of your story, okay. I know where you're about to go. Okay. Let, let, let's go backwards for a second. Come on. How, how old are you when your family leaves New York to come to Atlanta? 12, October 19th. 1991, I could tell you today, because it was the first time, like, I remember, like, dog, I attribute everything that I became as a man to Atlanta, because, at, and when you grow up in the projects, piss on the floor is nothing, that's normal to you. Like, violence is normal to you. Can, like, can, can you speak to that for one second? Because somebody does not live in the South Bronx. Somebody yes. did not grow up yes. in the hood. You yes. just said piss on the floor is normal to you. So for somebody watching this who lives yes. in middle America, who Not is raised middle class, can you explain what that normalcy looks like to a young boy coming up in the projects? The crazy part is it was just normal to me. It was, you know how it is in the projects, it's piss on the floors in the elevator, piss on the staircase on every floor, on the staircase, and the lower the floor gets, the more pisses on the floor because somebody might just run in your building and jump in the and take a piss. And I, re I remember the smell. I remember going to school and I remember, I remember watching people get murdered in front of my eyes playing uh, stoop ball where you throw the ball on the stairs and the kids out there. I remember watching someone get murdered. It just was, it's just normal to us. It was just like, this is what life is. It, you don't even think that you deserve anything. So me seeing that that was normal me seeing that that was normal was like, kind of like for me, it was like, well, that, that's just the life that I grew up in. That's just, that's, just, that's just what our life is. Piss on the floors is normal. Food stamps is normal. Welfare is normal. You know, like everybody's trying to survive. So everybody is trying to scam and get over on everybody. Like this is life. This is life. Like this is what it is. 
My uncle was a hustler and, you know, I'm going to just tell you a story. So my uncle was a hustler and I remember, I remember being 10 years old and my mother waking me up in the middle of the night saying, watch your brother and sister. And she stormed out the house and she grabbed a big knife and my stepfather grabbed the bat. See, this is, see, this story is so fresh on who I am that when people start talking about accolades, I'm like, bro, do you know I escaped hell? Like, like when you talk about what I'm doing today, I still feel like I'm like, I've been playing in a game of survivor and it's like, damn, you've, you've exceeded. It's like, yeah, but you don't know how scary those moments are knowing that you're not gonna be nothing and going after a world that people tell you you ain't shit the minute you walk in the music business. So I remember my mom woke me up and she said, watch your brother and sister. And she stormed out the house with a big knife. I woke up the next morning. I was up to like three in the morning. I woke up the next morning and my entire family from my grandmother's house is in my house. So I'm on the bunk, top bunk. Two of my cousins is on the bed with me. Was on the bottom bunk. Three of my cousins on the bed with her. Grandma's on the bed over here and my cousin is on the floor asleep. And I remember this so vividly. And that was life for like two years. So think about this for two years. So that was life because basically someone tried to break into her house because back in the day, remember the floor model TVs? Yep. Remember if you had a floor model TV in the hood, you was like hood rich. <laughs> so we had a floor model TV and they was trying to break into the house because my uncle was hustling and he was just giving us everything. Like he was floor model TV. He just hustled and he took care of his family. And it was just like, how the fuck did he do this? And he's young. So now we all got to move out of, now everybody from my grandmother's house because she had a four bedroom house and, my, and Webster projects. And my, we had a two bedroom house in Patterson projects. And now everybody from the four bedroom house lives in a two bedroom house. With the, with the five people that already lived there. So now it's pretty much 18 of us in a two bedroom apartment. You know, everybody sharing the same bath water. Like, Raymond, come in here, wash you up. All right, cool, get out. Hey, next, get in here. Same water we getting washed in. So I come from that and I remember, you know, we wasn't sitting around moping. It was like, honestly, it was the most amazing time of my life because now grandma in the house and, Grandma is not gonna let mom curse me out like she normally would. Like, so it was like, I was happy that grandma was there. And then I remember my uncle came home one day, two years later, he didn't come home, he came to see us and he just dropped the bag of money on the table. And he was like, and this, you know, he was like, get my whole, I remember what he said. He dropped the money on the table my family was going crazy. Cause it was like two, $3 million in cash. He was a street, he was a, a real hustler. Mm -hmm. And he said, get my fucking family out the projects now. Like I remember this cause I'm, tw I'm 12. He like, get them out the projects now. Go to, I remember he said, Virginia, Atlanta or Florida. I don't care which one we got to get out of the projects. Right? Cause he was dealing with a whole lot of street shit too. So it was like, he was really trying to get us out of it. So my aunt had a boyfriend in Atlanta. So- And that's she, how you wound up in Atlanta. That's how I wound up in Atlanta. So now, we all get on the Amtrak chain and come to Atlanta, and now I'm living in the suburbs. So now I'm seeing two family households. I'm seeing black people driving. You know, in the projects, you ain't catching, you don't have no car. You don't have a car. You, you don't have a car. So I'm seeing black people driving. I'm seeing my kids my age driving up on go karts and driving around on four wheelers, and I'm just fucked up. Like, oh my. So I'm thinking to myself, I finally made it to life. Like, this is life. We're great. And then all the kids in the neighborhood was making fun of us because they like, how many people live in your house? I'm like, it's 18 of us. They was like, nigga, y'all got 18 people in a four bedroom house, man. I'm thinking to myself like, nigga, we had 18 people in a two bedroom apartment <laughs> in the Bronx, nigga. But they, I remember just like, you finally make it out of hell and then you go into this place you call heaven and everybody's clowning you now. So it was like, so all of this shit stuck with me. Like, this is like, this is like the man you're seeing as a 41 year old man. It's like, that shit didn't leave me. So, you know, and I looked up to my uncles and everybody, but you know, I guess I didn't really show them the stuff that needed to be shown. So like, you know, just like, I wasn't like talented. I wasn't like the smartest kid in school. So I was like, Ray, you're going to be <laughs> a damn worker. Like get ready for that. Well, well so, you, you know something, even before you go there, Ray, I, I want to point something out because I think you raised so many great points in just telling this story. But you've gone on and you've made a significant amount of money. 
Uh, yes. You know, you have done well for yourself. Yes. But I wanted you to share this part of your story because for anybody who is watching this, I, I, I think you need to look at Ray. I think you need to look at others like him. Yeah. Just because you start out in a bad place, that does not have to be your reality for the remainder yeah. of your life. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.